we're going to do in this video, which we're recording live, by the way, is um, we're going to sharpen it. Now, I want to sharpen this saw, but also I want to sharpen this one. Now, that one has 14 teeth per inch, and this one has 18 teeth per inch. It's a dovetail saw. It's very fine cut, it is too. Which, it makes it a little bit more difficult to sharpen this saw in comparison to that one. But in some ways, that one's easier. So let's get to it anyway. So what we're going to use for that is a file, a saw file, a triangular saw file for either of these saws. Now, this little one here has got, is a little uh, uh, Nicholson uh, saw file, which I'm going to use with this tenon saw. It's 14 TPI, and um, it fits neatly into the teeth of that saw. But for the other saw, oh, somebody's brought me a coffee. No, she's my cup. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a coffee coming. Oh, can't be bad. Right. You can find my cup. Okay, do Thank you, Dom. Then this one here, which is actually a small, is a smaller gauge. Actually, no, it's the other way around. That's a smaller gauge. We're going to use that to sharpen this dovetail saw. So, yeah. Um, it's very fine. It's a very fine cut. In some ways, it's easier, but actually seeing it is a darn sight hard because it's teeth. They're tiny. Absolutely minuscule that can see that is if it's focused on it. But they're tiny, tiny little teeth. Now we'll bring the camera in a lot closer when we start doing it. But what we have to do is first, we have to have something to put the actual saw in. Otherwise, when you're trying to file across these teeth, what happens is it just vibrate. Yeah. So we need a set of jaws. That's what these are. These are vice jaws. Now you can get a proper saw vise, but they're quite hard to come by these days, and they're actually quite expensive, if you can find one. So I just literally make a set of jaws up, like this one's for that little dovetail saw, which is literally two pieces of wood, and it's bolted together. That's the idea. So it sandwiches it, see? You put your saw in there like so. Let me show you. So that goes in there, like that, and it, and that sits in there like so, yeah, that's it. And you just tighten up your, your nuts. Oh, I ah, felt that. And uh, it clamps the side of the blade. And obviously you tighten up with a span. I've got one over there. And it just wants to be below the gullet. And the gullet is the inside part of the tooth. So you have your tooth, it comes down like so. You've got your point. It comes down like so. And that part there is your gullet of the tooth. And you just literally clamp that so that's flush with the bottom of the gullet of the tooth. Not above it, but just at the bottom. Then you tighten that up. I have actually done videos about this before regarding gullets and the fleam and, you know, for, for uh, cross-cutting saws, your back saws or uh, rip saws and stuff like that. And they're, all, they're all slightly different. So now we've got that cl uh, you know, clamped in there like so. So that just supports the edge of the actual teeth. Now this particular saw, because this one's quite short and these are a bit on the long side, as, it, as I'm clamping here, what's happening is it's flaring out in the middle. So what I tend to do, I usually put a little G-clamp over the top of it as I go as well, on top of here. Just, just, just a little bit extra support. But this saw... Got that door squeaky. <laughs> oh, I've got a coffee, can't be bad. Um, this saw, because the blade is stiffer and the clamp the clamp um, is in a better position on the actual saw. Now, this one here is a um, tenon saw. I just, and, but the steel's thicker for a start, and it's it's a better fit. It's a better fit. It's made for the saw. Actually, it's actually made for uh, another saw, which is over here. This little span Jackson. That's actually made for this saw, but it fits this one quite nicely as well. And this saw. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is not actually this saw, we're going to be sharpening the other one. We're going to be sharpening the, uh, my little Z-Lux. So these two saws are pretty much the same uh, cut. They're both about four, They're both 14 TPI. And this one here, the other problem with this one, I don't know if you can see it, it's got a little bit of a bend in it. You can get that out, but you have to, what you have to do is you have to paint it just gently on one side and affect that little style stretch the steel on one side of the actual saw and effectively put an opposite bend in, but it's 
I haven't done it yet. A bit of a trick to it. So, um, so I want to sharpen the dovetail, and I want to sharpen one of these saws, probably this one, I think, because this one is blunt, definitely blunt. So hopefully, I'll remember right, it fits. I think I've actually made one of this as well, actually, but I think this fits in there anyway. Yes, it does, perfectly. Actually, yeah, it fits really well. Cool. The thing is, I, I don't sharpen these saws very often. You don't need to, because that's not, I don't do any sight work. So the only time they get blunt is for use. And um, if you use them properly for what they're meant for, you know, you're not going to knock the actual edge off very quickly. Now this is a cross cut um, pattern. You know, that you cut across the grain, but not not with the grain. Because of that, the angle of the teeth are different to say a uh, rip saw. But also you have a, what you call a fleam angle as well. Now how I'd explain fleam is instead of the when you're firing just going straight across like so, you have to go down slightly at an angle, hence the shape. Of the jewels if you look at an angle and I effectively just follow that as I go across to a very very slight angle and down and then we find but we have to do every other tooth and what you need is is a marker pen so you can mark where you've been and every so often put another little mark on just to refresh your memory where, where you are and you work your way across the saw that way and then you turn the saw around and then you work across the saw in the other direction. So it is a bit of a laborious job, but luckily it doesn't have to be done very often. But the first thing you've got to do, and this might sound a bit mad, is you need either a flat file, or I'm going to use this, I literally go over the top of the points of the teeth. What that does is it kind of lines the teeth up again, because if you keep filing and filing and filing with a file like so, what happens is you end up with a saw eventually, it ends up being like a roller coaster. So all you do is, you grab your fart and you just run it over the top like that three times. And just take just the tips off. Not trying to go mad. So now it's, you know, it's very blunt now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to bring it in a bit closer. And we're going to sharpen this saw up. And hopefully I'll get time to do this one as well, which is a dovetail saw. And what I tend to do is... I tend to, if I can find what I've done with them, I use a pair of ready specs. Because I can't see it, but the teeth are too small. <laughs> Little tiny, you know, these are what, three and a half times, three and a half uh, diopter ready specs. So I'll take them off. These are only ready specs as well. I've got to a point now that my eyes aren't even. Now they were, and now they're not. So um, I, I am going to the optician when I'm visiting the family in the UK very soon. Let's bring you in a bit closer. But first of all, let's just see who's here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, Mad Monk. I hope you're well, buddy. And Ginger Giraffe say, well, saws, they, they scare me. Well, they, they can if they're sharp. But then again, when they're sharp, they're controllable. When they're not sharp, they're, well, dangerous. Just like any blade, really. I'm going to bring it down there. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down there like so. Got one of them glue type pod things. That looks about right. That's good. So, the camera for me is totally out of focus because I'm wearing these strange glasses. But I can see the teeth. Ha ha! That's what I want to do. I want to be able to see those teeth. And this brings back memories for me because I used to watch my old father in his um, workshop every evening when he came back from work. You know, before hard point saws were a thing, just need to adjust that a bit, I think. Or do I? Oh, that'll be fine. Um, and he'd be in, in, his, in his garage, sharpening up his saws. Usually distance. I've got, I've got an, actually, that is his one of his old saws. And it is in desperate need of, um, well, some work, actually. And also he's put these um, horrible screws in here, which I need to get a proper set for. Make a new handle and get the right right screws for it. Because I don't know why he's used them. They're horrible. They're just wrong. Captive nuts. So yeah, that needs to, uh, a bit of refurbishment. And this one here that I use quite a bit is one I've refurbished already. Um, as you see, it's got the proper screws in there. Well, captive nuts. And this is a Diston. This is an American saw, this is. 
and it's a lovely bit of steel. Um, and this one also, it's a, it's a cross, it's not a rip saw, this is also a cross cut. Um, but it's a really good saw, but you see it's a distant. They're American. They're American, they are, they're American. <laughs> These days, people want to use these, um, yeah, ready to go saws. Now, I know, yeah, like the uh, throwaway hard point saws. Now, I know, um, oh, like the, what's it, the Sandvik 244s and stuff, like all the jack saw and stuff. They're, they're, they're okay for sight work. And they might say they're universal, but they're in the, no, there's no such thing as a, a universal saw. You either got, I do need to adjust that. You either got a cross cut or you've got a rip saw, really. Um, a cross cut formation for ripping is awful. The gullet of the tooth just fills up with, you know, you can't, they can't clear themselves quick enough. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen so I know where I'm starting and then I'm going to finish. Also, I'll just, um, you can, at the beginning, at this first inch, 25 mil of teeth you alter the you can alter the rake so um the rake is the, how far forward the tooth is the idea being is it makes it a little bit easier to start start the saw but i'm not going to worry i'm going to leave it in the same profile as i've got so i'm going to mark my first tooth and every so often i'll mark a tooth so i know full well that i've done every other tooth because the teeth do this as they go across the saw so we work from one side and do every other tooth. And then we flip it over and do the other side every other tooth. So I've got to make sure I'm on the right one. So it's going to be, there you go. That goes in there like so. And I've got my fleam angle as well, which is slightly back. Down. One stroke. And then I go to the alternate tooth. Very few people do this anymore, but there are some lovely tools that you can get out for pittance. They might be covered in rust, as long as they're not all kinked. You know, you'll you'll be able to. Um, oh, that's feeling better already. Be able to sharp it up and make use of it. They are so much nicer to use. The steel's better for obvious reasons because they're not throw away. In fact, mate, you're not throwing something away is a good thing this day and age anyway. And I do, you know, I, I do like the idea of having stuff that we can, you know, um, use that it isn't disposable. You can buy a new, a new, new resharpenable saw, they're still available, and they're not that expensive either. They can be, but um, depends on what you get. You, get, you can get, you know, half these little ties out or something like that, you can still get them. Or Crown Tools make some nice saws. Um, which are very good. So I'm doing every other two. I'm going to, my hand is slightly, the file is slightly down and at a slight, at a slight angle. And at the moment I'm just doing one per tooth. I'm not going to go crazy at it. What you end up doing that was you end up making your saw a funny shape, if you're not careful. So unless I, I you get to feel it. What You feel, oh, I didn't make much of a cut on that one. You think, yourself, hmm, I don't know about that. The other thing you've got to realise is that the, the cut on a file isn't just on the flats of the file. It's not just there, there, and there. The cutting is actually on the corners of the file as well. And if they weren't, what would happen is, as you get to the bottom of the gullet of the tooth, you know, that part of the tooth at the bottom, you wouldn't be actually cutting down. You'll get to the point where it's just, flat, you know, it's smooth and it's not going to actually remove any material. Just carry on. Keep talking, Mark, you never get the job done, will you? There we go. Right, one. It's a tooth. Not on there. I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to mark it again. Just so. It's just a visual recognition of how far I've got up to. You can see anyway because the, each tooth well just filed is shiny. I've got to make sure I do every other tooth. Usually one stroke is enough, and you'll feel it. You know, you'll feel when you're making your stroke, 
you'll feel it cutting. If it's not cutting, you know, you'd, you know you've done something wrong. Get some of that position. I can see, I can see on the tops now where I've run the fire over, which in this case I use the uh, the diamond um, sharpener. And I can see where I've, where obviously the ridge of the teeth were pointing out further than other places. So it's becoming obvious. I've got to make sure that 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 is gone. So that two for them be smaller and in line with the others. Yes, you have got a patience. Miss a tooth. So easy to make a mistake. And then you've got to start again. <laughs> if you make a mistake, you've, you've actually, if you want to keep the saw correct. Now on a um, cross cut saw like this one, the, t the angle of each tooth, the rake, is the same as the back of the tooth. So it's the same on both sides. So literally, I'm not trying to do that with the file. I'm just going with the file, basically. That seems to suit my, my how I use it. See, this one here required more material off. So it's a, the tooth was too tall. You'll soon know if you've done it wrong, so it won't cut. <laughs> Get to know where. So I'm using that line here that I've made into the piece of wood with the file as my guide that I've missed a tooth. If I'm if I'm a hair, I won't see that line. That'd be gone. Be hidden by the file. But because I can just about see the line, the line and the angle I'm at the, the back edge, it's uh, it's okay. It's good. Teeth on edge. That one, miss a tooth, it's that one. Oh, I can move my chair again. There's wheels on this chair. Obviously, if I was doing an edited video for this, it would be a lot quicker. But I suppose in it live like this, someone could actually sharpen their saw, you know, with me. See what I mean? So we can do it together. So however long it's going to take me, it'll probably take long. It's going to take you. Yes. Oh. oh, there we go. That wouldn't do. Got a light, didn't you? So there at the end. And then I'm going to turn it around. Put a bit, put a bit more off that one. You see. When I upload the short video, I put one on earlier. It's just I do it to get onto the short shelf ready, so you don't have to watch it. Obviously, <laughs> you don't watch anything to be honest, but um, it's just there for it helps promote the channel. Nearly at the end. Oh, bliss, 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 bliss. Oh, that back tooth. Ouch. Got a sharper it. Sharp. Getting sharper all, already. So, that one just. That isn't just one side. I've got to turn it around and do the other side now. So, we get the angle on each tooth. So, I'm doing alternate. So, all the ones I haven't sharpened, I'm now going to sharpen. And if I find that there's any teeth on there that like, are flat on the tops, so are still blunt. And I think myself, well, then I need to obviously do them a bit more. I don't know if you can see it. I'll take it out. You might be able to see that some teeth 
Oh. Look at that. You can see it was shiny. Every other tooth is shiny now. That's the, that's the plan. I love it when the plan comes together. Let's see, let's see what you're saying. And I've just been videos. I hope you're up. You were here earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm well. Do, 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 do. Oh, back. Yeah, so now I'm going to sharpen the other face. So the alternative, the tooth that I haven't done. So I need to get myself in the right position again. So I've got to think of the angle I'll be at. So I think I'll leave that way. You've got a lead on the tooth, basically. So I'll start from here. Which one have I done? Is that one. So no, that one. Yeah, that's right. Quite easy to make a mistake. So handy, I have a pair of ready specs, but huge difference. God, I feel so much sharper. <laughs> Thing is, you actually feel the fire you, as you as you're filing. You can you sort of sense it. You can feel it. You know if you cut, you'll feel it. Now, if you haven't managed to do every other tooth exactly that way, you're likely to make a mistake in the opposite direction. So you need to make sure you get it right in the first place, otherwise you can come a cropper. Forgetting what I have done, what I haven't done, I think that one is next. I hope so. So easy to make a mistake. Now you think this one's hard. I'm not wait until I start doing that dovetail saw. Oh wow. It just feels so much nicer. Tighten the vice up. It's a bit loose. A reposition. I did a search for a topic on videos earlier, and um, on a particular video, and uh, I come across this channel. The first what was pretty much at the top of the search was um, this. Well, this channel so it had about a million subscribers. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> a pretty German lady um, with a very well, very tight leotard on. Um, doing stuff with tools, woodworking tools. So I thought, oh no, I had a look in the comments, what people are saying in the comments, and everyone is just misogynistic. <laughs> no wonder you've got all these women subscribers. <laughs> so I was wondering, do you think I should do that? If I get an air tied on, I don't know if they have the same effects, though. It might work. Maybe. What do you think? I've got my doubts. Oh, have I missed a tooth? Hope not. Oh, that's hard to tell. Right, that one's that one. That one. Oh, I think I made a mistake. So I've got to correct myself. From, if I go back this way, from this direction, I, I can see where I've been. That one, that one. 
that one, that one. I'm confused now. So what I might do, I might start from this end now because I can't see what I've done. I've made a booby here. I've either missed or skipped a tooth, but I can't tell. <laughs> so I'm going to start at this end and then it should meet up into the correct place in the correct middle, right? In the correct middle if I need to. I hope. Right, so is that one, that one, this one? Okay. Oh, I can see now. So easy to make a mistake. I've got a really dodgy tooth here, like for instance, one that didn't really do anything. So that when you get that, it can really send everything off. So I've got a bad tooth at the back. Or the floor. You can recut your teeth, you can start again. But, <laughs> the big but is, when you do that, you don't remove all the teeth. You take them down to about halfway, make sure everything's levelled up, and then you then you file a new set of teeth. I don't want to do that. It takes flip. <laughs> okay. This is when I forget what bit what I got up to. There, that's it. You can send it off to be to be done professionally, but you can manage it at all costs. And quite often you want to just get it done, get I mean so you have to get your saw back so you can start using it. So I've um, no idea to keep sending stuff off. Something's going on here. Last time I sharpened this, I must have been drunk. Quite possible. <coughs> nerdy, nerdy there. And then we just do a thing called saw set. They do this, yeah, do the set on the saw. And the set is the um, basically the angle of each tooth from side to side. You want the saw to be you know, the teeth for the saw to be flush with the side of the blade. Otherwise, the if they were the the cut would be the same thickness as the blade, and that means the blade would constantly jam up in the slot. Nerdy there, but all getting close now. Well, that feels good. Yes, yeah, so basically, I put well, I run the file along each of those teeth. The angle feels good, it's not, it's not as sharp that way as it is that way. It's grabbing. A very slight forward rake on the teeth. Now, what I have to do, you don't have to do this every time. I need to do the set of the saw. We use a special tool for that, called the saw set. You can buy these things second hand. There's loads of them about because everybody who had a saw would have a saw set years ago. So, now that saw now is sharp that way. So it's got, that's a now usable saw again. But also, I want to put a set on the teeth. Now, you don't have to set the teeth every single time you um, sharpen the saw. You, you generally do that every few sharpens. 
or if you feel that the saw is binding at all, if it's, um, when I say binding, when you try and make your cut, if it's gripping on the side of the blade constantly, well, that would be a sure, yeah, sure far, that'd be a good sign that you need to do the set. Now this is a saw set, and I've got a bit of right, I've got a, you get different sizes, like this one's number eight, is it, eight or nine? Oh, it was a 77, that one's a clip 77. Um, and that is another 77. I've got two 77s now. This used to be my dad's, because I wrote inside it's dad's. Um, but this one has mine. It's probably older than dad's, this one is, but it's, um, so you've got your saw set on there. So what you do is you have to adjust it to whatever. This sort of wheel here on the saw set, it, it's thicker here than it is on there. So it is, you rotate it to whatever set you want. Place it over your saw. Put the handle in. Yet again, you've got to do this um, every other tooth. One tooth goes one way, one tooth goes the other way. So, um, What it's got to be. Uh, I used about eight. There's numbers all the way around. All the way around the wheels are numbers. So we just um, bring it down on top of the tooth and we go every other tooth again. Gently get a little squeeze out onto the tooth. Let's bring it a bit closer so you can actually see. Hopefully, you can see to the tripod and the now. So, basically, the, the, that little anvil, there's a little anvil in there, and it squeezes the tooth. So, a little, yeah, like a hammer and an anvil. So, I'm bending the tooth over in each, every other tooth over. It's tools made of bronze, so even though it's softer than what the actual steel of the saw is. You seem to have a bit of an error in the, on this way over. Yes, be careful because if it started off, oh, I don't want to do is create fatigue. In the tooth. Start the middle. Something's gone amiss on this saw. Yeah. If you make an error, you can always, you know, bend it back again. It's not, you know, it's not a big deal. You've got to be careful you don't put metal fatigue into the, into the teeth. You end up losing teeth. That is really annoying that night. You can actually see where you've been, funny enough. I didn't think so, would you? I'm going to turn it around. And we'll try it and see. Well, I've got obviously this side set. 
a bit tricky because for some reason they seem to be it's gone out of um, sync in a couple of places. Concentrating it. <laughs> so doing every other tooth. Now, luckily, with a dovetail saw, you don't actually um, put a set on the teeth at all. It's gone a bit skew if here. No idea to put the set on, so the cut, the kerf of the cut, is slightly wider, you know, than the actual thickness of the blade. Luckily, this doesn't really need much of a. Apart from where it's gone out of sync, regarding you know, it's, um, some teeth more over one side than they are the other. Which is okay as long as it's balanced. Some saws are actually to cut that and machine that way. Anyway, but this one should, wouldn't be, this is just as it is. This is obviously, last time I sharpened it, I went, or set, or done a set, I should say, I went and screw it. Now, if you see that, can you see that all those teeth? The light's glistening on it. Let's see if we can get our camera to focus on it. Perfect. You see, that's it's shiny, so that's a good sign. That. Yeah, let's see how well it cuts. Hopefully, it's better than it was a minute ago. At the beginning of this video, so I've got a bit of wood. Old pine, some of the worst wood to cut. So, what I do sometimes, use your, uh, quite often, use a fine diamond or even a bit of uh, emery paper, and just do that on one stroke on each side. It's a bit like when you're doing your um, honing on a plane iron, because you've got you're creating a burr. And if you don't remove that a little bit on those peaks, you'll end up just constantly grabbing your bit of wood. Oh, that's better. <laughs> That's one sharp saw. That's fine. So all you need for that is a saw set, like one of these. And you can pick these up for, you know, yeah, really cheap. Well, I say that, well, I bought them off eBay. Often, well, you know, anything cheap comes up, I usually buy it, you know. That's probably why I've got three, well, I've got three, because it's got two sizes. Um, this one here, that's number 77, 77. Where's my other one got? Another one somewhere. And that one's my dad's. These are all, these are all seven, number 77. I've got a tiny one as well somewhere. Um, but I don't need it because I'm going to be sharpening this next. And this is a dovetail saw. And the teeth are about 18 TPI. I think it's 18, 18 or 20, I can't remember though. I think it's 18. Um, the difference with this is that's easier. In some ways, it's easier to sharpen. In some ways, and the reason for that is you don't put a theme on it. You just literally sharpen straight across with a dovetail saw like this one. You can put a theme on it if you really want to, 
Also, you don't put a set on teeth. There's no set on a dovetail saw. Sometimes I wish there was. <laughs> in some ways, it might make it easier. So now we're going to get that in the vise. It's a bit tricky, that in the vise, because um, I might actually use... Oh, have I got a pen on vise somewhere? No. I don't normally do it in this vise. I might have to... Oh, no, I'll put it here, and I'll, I'll put this in. I might have to move the camera. Ah, no, I don't do. I know I'm talking to myself, though. <laughs> as you do, as I do. I'll grab a couple of bits of wood, just so I can clamp that in the vise. So I ain't got to move over to the other vise. The problem is, if I try and clamp the blade, the handle, I'll be clamping the handle, and there's no free space to actually have the blade not be obstructed by the handle. So all I do is I'll, put, I'll sandwich it like so. Two bits of wood, like a pair of chocks. And then stick this in the vise. Well, that's my plan, it should work. Now something else I want to do, I mentioned it earlier that because this isn't actually designed for this blade, this is pinching on the end here. That, that bolt here needs to be close to the blade actually because it's actually made for a different saw. Um, and because of that, it's the chocks here aren't squeezing up. So what I do is I get a small clamp, just so I put clamp that as I go. If I get to them, ah, a little tiny clamp, the ideal. A tiny G clamp. So I don't need to turn this one round, which is quite handy. So I'll, do, I'll literally be doing perpendicular to the blade. I'll just squeeze that back out. Otherwise, it's going to um, it's going to vibrate like crazy. And all I've got to do is it's pretty much what I did earlier. Put ready specs on. I'm ready. I've got ready specs on. <laughs> and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. But not without a fleam, so there will be none of this angle going on. There wasn't this tiny angle on the other one, but there was definitely an angle. Um, it's literally going to be straight across every single tooth on the saw. That's all I'm going to do. But what I haven't done, which I should have done, and I'm sure someone would have pointed it out, you didn't do that with your foil. In this case, a diamond stone. So I'm just going to, you're going to run across the top of the teeth. A couple of times, just take the points. Otherwise, what had not happened, I'd have an accumulative error over a period of time, and then the saw will be doing this. It'll be like a roller coaster. So that's kind of my guide. So I can see all the shiny bits, so I'll just take the points off. Um, it, flat, it, straightens, it straightens the teeth, make sure they're all in line. If they're not in line, you'll have aggressive parts of the saw and parts of the saw that aren't. This file is correct for that as well, it's fine. And I'm just going to run that. You could use a smaller file if you wanted to. I did have a smaller file, but I don't know what I've done with it. Actually, I've got this is there. Hey, here it is. That's this one. This little, this little sort of thing here. And it is, what make is that? That's a Nichols file, that one is. That's a, they're really good. I just knocked a little handle out of a bit of old um, purple heartwood. It's Brazilian hardwood, so an ironwood. Uh, what make is that? It says Portugal on it. <laughs> anyway, it's a file. So I'm just going to run that across each tooth, I'd say. Oh, did you hear that? That horrible noise? I mean, the blade is a lot thinner on this, is it? A lot thinner. Yes. That's better. Um, I haven't got to do every other tooth. I'll just go straight across. So in some ways it's easy, in some ways it's hard. A lot of teeth there. Oh, put your teeth on edge. I'm going to move that now over there. 
you've got a proper, yeah, saw, saw voice, we need so obviously a lot better. Actually, it would make more sense to put the face up around the other way, and it wouldn't be the way of the handle, then, would it? Make more sense. Oh, I want this few more projects, that's what I want. I'll, I'll finish that TIE Fighter, and um, I've got to make a whole load of bird boxes and a batch. Big batch of bird boxes because we can't get to that nesting season. Now, but we're gonna have to get them we'll get at least some of them for this year, or it'll be too late. We'll get them in and done because the birds won't have anywhere to live. Poor little birdies. There you go, let's, let's get in there. Teeth on this saw aren't they in not aren't in very good alignment. Probably because it's quite hot in the sense that it's actually very uh well they're tiny, tiny little teeth. Uh, Donald Trump's hands. Right, we do that along because it's, it's vibrating too much. Did I just change the thing file over? I think I did, didn't I? Oh. It's not a very good file. Oh, I'll use that one. That file is terrible. I think I need to get a new file for the dovetail saw. Oh, this one's actually seems okay. If your file is too big, your teeth won't be very deep. That means your gullets won't be very deep. And that means when you're trying to cut with the saw, the teeth will just bog up. So too fine or too shallow in the gullet and for the size of the tooth. One thing you can use is a bit of um, chalk on your file, and then the uh, lands in the file, which are like a little, the little, you know, bits below the surface, they won't fill up with metal. Just, and you just tap it, and it basically all fall out, and you just use a bit of so bit more um, chalk. Very soft, and I never bother. <laughs> it is what you're supposed to do, though. I've got a tooth missing there. Don't fancy recutting this, so it see that size. Can you imagine how difficult that would be? It'd be a nightmare. I don't want to be doing that. I think there's one saw that might benefit going to the saw doctor. Things are getting harder and harder to find. A good saw doctor, because um, well, it's not something many people do these days, is it? Nearly there. Got a lot of teeth. Yeah, a hell of a lot of teeth. I missed one. That's getting really annoying it was, because um, I've been trying to use this little dovetail saw. And I'd, oh, I just want that metal over that. I won't be clever. I'll have to go over that little bit again, just gently. I've got some videos I need to edit as well. I need to get them done. I've been so busy with the other channel. That's got hit again, so I know I said it earlier. 
for the other video. But yeah, it's just um, quite hard to keep up with YouTube. If you're an established channel and they're not they're not still trying to like see whether or not they can trust you, it's um it takes quite a while to get that. Yeah. Get that label of being someone who they who they trust. Again. Oh, we're getting there, we're getting there. We've well, only got a little bit to go now, look. A little bit on the end. Can't be bad. So, yes, this is a strange thing to be doing live, but... It would have been... Yeah. There you go. Oh, getting, getting excited now. I'm a sharp saw again. Dee, 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 dee. Well, yeah, I need to get on that tie fire as well. I need to get that done. Bird boxes have got to be done. More bat boxes have got to be done. I need to do more propagating for the trees. We have ordered those trees as well, so it's quite good. <laughs> Put them light. So annoying. I actually want to do more work on this channel than I do the other one, actually. It's just, um... The other one does, um... We keep our head above water financially, within reason, sort of. <laughs> Not at the moment, because it's, um... It's gone a bit doodly again. I was alright for about two weeks. In fact, it was doing really well for about two weeks, and now it's gone really... Bad. Keep using the goalposts. I haven't moved my clan belt, I forgot they did that. But I'm near the end now anyway, so I'm near a bolt, so it's not so bad. Oh my god, this is a laborious job. There you go. There you are. No, does it matter? Did I miss any teeth? Quite possibly. I'm looking. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I did it in there. You can tell because it's dark, it's a, you, you just skip the teeth. It skipped teeth. There's a couple of teeth there missing as well. But it does really need recutting. It's interesting to see that, you know, sharp. Let's get on there, you. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, the uh, yeah the jaw the saw saw vice has a set of jaws on it designed to you know with a taper on the top so it's only just pinching the top edge of the blade. Yeah, you know, that's made for the job. So let's see what this is doing. So I grab a bit of wood. Remember, there's no set on this saw. God, oh, I feel so much better. Wasn't doing that before. Loads better. So there you go. You can sharpen your saws. Before I never sharpened it. <laughs> well, funny old angle. Let's get the right angle. Like Wouldn't normally go to a bull and chain shop like that, but you know, that's a dovetail saw as well. Remember? So there you go. Okay, so yes, it certainly is possible, and also it's actually really easy. But you do need a set of ready specs. I'll take this off now because I make your eyes go. My eyes are aching. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a very simple thing to do. You can sharpen your dovetail saw or back saw. They're all back saws. Actually, it's a back saw because it's got a back. Um, this here is a tenon saw. Well, actually, this is a back saw. 
Um, this one here is a tendon saw. <laughs> this has got finer cut than that one. That's 14 TPI. And this one, if you remember right, it is 11 TPI. Slightly coarser. But either way, they, they all, you know, they all do a job. And that one feels so much nicer now. And that's done. Excellent. I'm glad I've done that. Make them usable again. So you see how thin that blade is. <laughs> it's a very, very thin blade in comparison to that one. That's definitely thicker. Yeah. So, well, you know, here though, you can sharpen yourself. Um, if, you, if you're willing to put a bit of time into it and to do it, well, then that's worth doing because, you know, otherwise, what's the options? The option is you have to buy another saw, which means there's more stuff going into the landfill because, you know, Plastic handled saws and stuff like that. We're talking about recycling, it's half of this stuff. It's not really recyclable. It's not practically recyclable anyway. You put effort into it, which means that people don't do it. So, um, it's a bit daft, isn't it? Oh, dear, oh, dearie, dearie me. Oh. Hello, Esther Witt. Needed a break from this crazy day. Yes, I bet. It's been a bit of an odd day, isn't it? With what's going on in Ukraine? It's a bit scary what's going on over there. It's a bit frightening. Uh, just being, so I've got, just being videos, Esther Witt. I've got, oh, Glasgow, how are you doing, buddy? Hello, peeps. <laughs> Just the rain stopped. Oh, well, we've been, it's been raining here this afternoon as well. So, yeah. It's been a bit a bit nuts. There goes my compressor. Noisy old thing. Hello, Bass Flute from Germany. Greetings from France. We've been sharpening saws, is what we've been doing. So, I sharpened this old Zelux saw. You know, you just literally just using a file. Yeah, and some ready specs are a good idea, which I use some three and a half times or three and a half diopter um, ready specs to so I can see them. Obviously, you can't see them because they're just too tiny, tiny. They're like Donald Trump's hands, they are. You just pair this old, yeah, cheap ass um, ready specs. They're three and a halfs, and it just allows you to see each teeth and see where you've been. And although it, it, it's gone a bit skew if in the middle. Not for me, probably from most sharpened at last time. But it's, all, it's fine, it's cutting absolutely fine. You know, it's, um, we throw too much stuff away, don't we? Plain and simple. You know, and uh, that is a very old saw, it's probably 50 years old. Maybe more. This one, God knows how old this dovetail saw is, it used to be an old man's. It was as a, you know, it's an hell of a state when I got it. Oh, this one. Can't see down there. <laughs> Little dovetail saw. Uh, I don't know what make it is. I ain't got a clue. Got nothing written on it whatsoever. I did have to trim the blade because the blade had a few little ripples in the blade. And it's not too bad now. But it does actually cut really nicely. Um, especially in oak, which I generally use for oak and chestnut and stuff like that. And then we've got this one here. This one isn't actually quite as old. This is still old. Oh, actually, that slow saw is probably more than 50 years old. What am I talking about? They'd be 50s. They would be so like, 60, 70 years old. Um, this one, I remember my dad buying, this was, used to be my father's, um, I can remember my dad buying this one, and he paid, not, uh, well, he paid £10 for it, I can remember, it's old uh, Tysac, and, uh, you know, that's the thing, is it? how many saws, disposable saws, would that have been for this saw, remember this would have been a little bit deeper, so obviously it's been sharpened several times, so that blade would have been deeper. But how many times, how many saws of this repli uh, would have been thrown away for that one saw? And it's still going strong. It's a very good saw. Um, now, if you look at this one here, this sold as a uh, Spain Jackson saw, quite a common brand that was in the UK. Um, it's been sharp so many times. It wasn't originally that, that shallow. No. But it's actually thinner hair, narrower hair, sorry, than it is at this end. It's just progressively got 
Yeah, that, that wouldn't have been sharp that way. It would have been straight, perpendicular to the um, to the handle. But um, it's still just sore. It's okay. It's got a bit of a kink in it, though. Just a bit of a kink. It tends to grab a little bit, so it needs a little bit of work. Um, it was okay, so I don't know what I've done to it. <laughs> Probably something I shouldn't have done. Abused it somehow. But yeah. Yeah, it's been a bit mad. It's been a mad day. So I've been building shutters today. And I thought I did, well, I did a video earlier about doing the braces, as in just a live video, just putting braces on a shutter. So I thought make if it isn't too long, I can make it into a, a video video. And um, <laughs> sometimes at three hours for a live stream, uh, yeah, and then it's just one video in it. Whereas if I do lots of shorter live streams, um, it really says more videos. You can keep them on topic, keep them on point, can't you as well? So yeah, so it's um, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been sharpening, and I've got a load more sharpening to do. But um, that will do for now with sharpening. So yeah, I'll be oh I'll be streaming for an hour. So um, I'm gonna call that it for now. I don't know if I'll go live again. Yeah, I've got to do some work. I've got to do some videos as well. I've got to find out what's going on with my channel again. The other channel that is. Something gone wrong there. <laughs> again. So that's a bit depressing. Oh, uh, Simon says, hope you are, hope well, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to click off in a second. We're just been sharpening saws. So we just sharpened a little dovetail saw, which has 18 TPI. So that's 18 teeth. Um, you know, per 25 mil per inch and also we sharpened uh this back saw here oh like a yeah like a 10 saw well they're all back saws actually yeah, because i've got a brass back one i got that's quite yeah what i call a back saw if you have a thinner blade um but yeah it's reinforced stiffened up by the the back of the saw now there are still some really nice Tools you can buy, so you've got crown tools, makes some nice ones we've mentioned earlier. If anyone want to buy them, oh, but saying that, yeah, there's plenty of them second hand still. Some people are scared of them, they're scared, they're frightened. What do I do with it? It's blunt, just sharpen it, it's really easy. As long as, long as you've got something, to, you know, you can see the teeth with Have some strong ready specs or something, or maybe magnifying glass. The ideal ones are ones on the flexi handle, you know, on the flexi thing, and just put it in. But it works. So yeah. Anyway, it's time for me to go. Simon says you upset the algorithm. I probably did upset the algorithm again. It doesn't seem to be yeah. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't like me. <laughs> you know what? The other channel. Um, the last two weeks were doing really well. After like two months of really bad. And now it's gone really bad again. The last four days, it's just poof. the views on, on the videos are really, really low. And it's not that's because they're not that's because the video they're not actually being shown. If I look at the impressions from YouTube in the in the analytics, they're not suggesting my videos for some reason. I don't know what I've done wrong. Probably done something wrong. Gonna cry. I was getting really excited about it as well, because I was doing well. But hey say the V. These things are sent to try us, aren't they, eh? So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go because I, the videos haven't been too long otherwise. Uh, and they did go live earlier today as well. Yeah. And like Ginger says, saws are sharp. Well, they should be. <laughs> anyway, Teta. Keep yourself safe and don't get stressed out about Ukraine. It's very sad, I know. Ta-ta.